Frank Hergert and I made this video for all of you who are interested in composition. Today, we'll analyze my first prelude that you can listen to beforehand by clicking on this link. First of all, where did I get the idea to compose a cycle of 24th preludes? During the year 2020, we all experienced periods of inactivity as musicians due to the COVID epidemic. As far as I'm concerned, I used this time to materialize a project that had been nurturing for two years already in my head, to compose 12 preludes that I wanted dedicated to my father who died in 2018. Twelve other preludes followed dedicated to my mother, because as tradition dictates, and embodied by the genius of Bach, Chopin, Debussy, Rachmaninoff, and many others, the preludes generally form a cycle of 24 pieces, sometimes divided into two volumes of 12 pieces. I chose to compose preludes for different reasons. They are short pieces, parts of a cycle but nevertheless independent, they offer great freedom of writing since there are no constraints of form, tempo or writing. I also like the idea of being able to compose different short pieces with very contrasting characters. Usually, when I compose a type of work that fits into a tradition of so-called classical music, I start by listening to as many references as possible. I select the works that touch me the most and put together playlists that I listen to and repeat. At the same time, I study the scores to understand more in depth the different possible writing methods, the melodic, harmonic and rhythmic vocabulary. Regarding the ideas that are the basis of each of my composition, they usually come to me in three different ways. One, by improvising and recording my playing. Two, by listening to music in which one aspect will be the trigger. A melodic fragment, a rhythm, a writing process, a stylistic element, a harmony, a harmonic sequence, etc. Three, by simply humming and jamming in my head. In the case of this first prelude, the main idea came to me while improvising on arpeggios in mirrors, or in other words, in opposite movements, one ascending arpeggio and the other descending. Quickly, the idea of this harmonic sequence E major and C major came to me. two contrasting chords, which seem to belong to two different worlds, but which are nevertheless connected, the chord of C major being part of the scale of E harmonic minor. As I wasn't sure how to develop this draft composition, I used it as it was initially for a jingle of one of my YouTube channels. Later, I decided to develop this idea for my first prelude because I knew there was something promising about this musical idea. Regarding the form, I used the ABA form, that is, a main idea that can be repeated, followed by a central, modulating and contrasting part, which ends with a re-exposition or recapitulation of the first idea. From a writing perspective, it was clear to me from the start that I was going to use these mirrored arpeggios throughout the piece. My main question was therefore harmonic. How to follow up this powerful E major, C major chord progression? 
After repeating my A idea, I opted for a bass movement leading to the fourth degree via a dominant alternate chord. Classic sequence, but which had the advantage of maintaining the heroic character of this prelude. A long harmonic progression follows, where the melody and the bass evolve in parallel upward movement. This harmonic sequence is mainly composed of reverse chords, which has two advantages. One, to have a melodic bass line, very important. Two, to keep a constant instability which creates tension and the expectation of a resolution. It's a process that I use a lot in my compositions. After this long crescendo, it was the perfect time for a moment of lull. Reversing the E minor chord over its third contributes to the airy and mysterious character. In this suspended harmony that extends over seven bars, a chromatic movement takes shape and gives flavor to this harmony. This chromatic line is an idiomatic twist that can be found in many works. The following part contrasts in every way with the preceding parts – dynamic, writing process, range, etc. The harmonic progression is mainly carried out by the ascending movement of the bass. In terms of writing, I looked for an effect similar to the technique used by Chopin in his 12 Opus 25. This B part concludes with a dominant chord that mirrors previous movements and opens the way for re-exposure in a fortissimo dynamic. Compared to the very first A section, the re-exposure has two main variations. One, the melody and bass are doubled at the octave for more volume, texture and depth. Two, on the second round, after the harmony of C major, a melodic bass movement concludes.
Finally, the coda, composed of an upward movement, creates a crescendo effect. Three consecutive intervals of minor seventh, transposed by a fourth, give this modern tonality. I hope that this analysis has enabled you to acquire additional and useful tools for your compositions. Thank you for your attention. Thank you also for the blue thumb, your shares and your comments. See you soon for more composition tips. Stay creative. Mm.